Breaking news from around your world on this Thursday, June 20th, 2019. I'm Larry Rice. Iran's Revolutionary Guard shot down a U.S. surveillance drone Thursday amid heightened tensions between Tehran and Washington over the collapsing nuclear deal with world powers, though American and Iranian officials disputed the circumstances of the incident. The Guard said it shot down the RQ-4 Global Hawk drone over Iranian airspace, while the U.S. said the downing happened over international airspace in the Strait of Hormuz, some 21 miles from Iran. The U.S. military central command called it an unprovoked attack, and President Donald Trump tweeted that Iran made a very big mistake in shooting it down. Trump told reporters in the Oval Office that the drone was unarmed and clearly in international waters, and that it could have been shot down by someone who was loose and stupid. Previously, the U.S. military alleged that Iran had fired a missile at another drone last week that was responding to the attack on two oil tankers near the Gulf of Oman. The U.S. blames Iran for the attack on the vessels. Tehran denies it was involved. All this has raised fears that a miscalculation or further rise in tensions could push the U.S. and Iran into an open conflict some 40 years after Tehran's Islamic Revolution. Thursday's drone incident marks the first direct Iranian-claimed attack on the U.S. amid the crisis. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, meeting in Pyongyang with Chinese President Xi Jinping, said Thursday that his country is waiting for a desired response in stalled nuclear talks with the United States. Kim said North Korea would like to remain patient, but it hopes the relevant party will meet halfway with North Korea to explore resolution plans that accommodate each other's reasonable concerns. Xi's trip to North Korea, the first by a Chinese president in 14 years, raises the possibility that China could help break a months-long impasse in talks between the U.S. and North Korea over the North's nuclear weapons. Describing the issue as highly complex and sensitive, President Xi said his government is willing to play a constructive role in the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. The summit comes as both countries are locked in separate disputes with the United States, China over trade and North Korea over its nuclear weapons. With President Xi due to meet President Trump next week in Japan, analysts say Kim may ask the Chinese leader to pass on a message that could revive the talks with the United States. Potent thunderstorms have left more than 200,000 people without power across the southern United States, and forecasters say fierce winds are expected to wallop parts of several states as new storms form Thursday. Fallen trees ripped down power lines and crashed into buildings along a line from Texas to Alabama overnight and into Thursday morning, and a few isolated tornadoes were reported, damaging roofs in the northeastern Texas city of Greenville. More than 70,000 homes and businesses are without power in Arkansas, and more than 30,000 outages each are reported in Texas, Louisiana, and Alabama, where crews are out working to remove toppled trees and clear blocked roads. Forecasters said the storms were moving eastward, with more severe weather possible Thursday in Alabama and Georgia, all the way up the eastern seaboard to Pennsylvania. The Storm Prediction Center said North and South Carolina, Eastern Georgia, and Southern Virginia will see an enhanced risk of wind damage from powerful Thursday afternoon storms. Downburst winds, strong winds that descend from a thunderstorm and spread out when they hit the ground, appear to be the greatest threat in this area. Mexico approved the U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade agreement Wednesday, ratifying the agreement with a 114-4 to majority and becoming the first country to give its stamp of approval. Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador was a proponent of the deal, essentially ensuring its passage in a Senate held by his party. The deal, which is an update to NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, must now gain approval from U.S. and Canadian lawmakers. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has yet to set a date to vote on the pact, and Democrats have said they want to see some changes in the agreement's labor and environmental rules. Canada isn't opposed to the agreement, but Canadian officials have said they are following U.S. pacing on ratification. The FBI is testing samples taken from a minibar at a hotel in the Dominican Republic where Americans stayed. 
The tests are part of an investigation into nine American tourists who have died over the last 13 months after visiting that Caribbean nation. Dominican officials have labeled the deaths isolated incidents, but the number of cases has raised alarm bells for many potential tourists. The most recent victim had reportedly just been given a bill of good health when he died at a Dominican resort. His brother said the family wants to pursue American testing if a Dominican authorities do not supply adequate answers. The former president of Interpol pleaded guilty Thursday to taking more than $2 million in bribes over 12 years while helping companies and individuals make illegal profits. Meng Hongwei appeared in court Thursday in Tianjin, where he admitted to taking bribes, using his power for personal gain, squandering state funds to pay for an extravagant lifestyle, and disregarding the principles of being a party member. In addition to president, Meng held other positions within Interpol from 2005 to 2017. He resigned as president of the Global Policing Agency in October, days after his wife reported him missing. He became Interpol's first Chinese leader in 2016. Meng was expelled from the Communist Party and lost his position in March and was arrested April 24th. His wife sought asylum in France where the couple have a second home. Earlier this year, she asked French President Emmanuel Macron to talk with the Chinese president about her husband's case. Hamas chief Ismail Haniyeh said on Thursday that two industrial zones, a new power line, and a hospital would be built for Palestinians in the Gaza Strip as part of a truce understanding between his Islamist group and Israel. He did not say when construction of the two industrial zones and the hospital would start, but he noted that funds from Qatar would be used to purchase a new power line from Israel and create jobs. The deal, brokered by Egypt, Qatar, and the United Nations, has not been publicly acknowledged by Israel, which deems Gaza's ruling Hamas movement a terrorist organization and shuns direct negotiations. Some two million Palestinians live in Gaza, where the economy has suffered years of Israeli and Egyptian blockades, as well as recent foreign aid cuts and sanctions by the Palestinian Authority, Hamas's rival in the Israeli-occupied West Bank. Qatar has in recent years funneled hundreds of millions of dollars into relief projects in Gaza, viewing the aid as a way to stave off privatization and fighting with Israel. Unemployment in Gaza, which has a population of 2 million, is at 52 percent. President Vladimir Putin told Russians Thursday that there were signs that years of falling wages, which have dented his popularity, were drawing to an end and that a government program would deliver higher living standards. The 66-year-old Putin, in power as president or prime minister since 1999, was re-elected by a landslide last year, but his high ratings have slipped over pension reforms. In his annual televised question-and-answer session, Putin said low living standards, low wages, poor health care, and worries about how rubbish was being disposed of were now the most acute problems for Russians. The Russian leader reminded voters that for all their problems, they were better off now than in the 1990s before he came to power, when the Soviet Union's collapse sent incomes plunging and caused mass unemployment. While Russia's economy has been transformed during his tenure, Putin argues an aging population coupled with a shrinking labor force has made pension reform imperative in order to keep the state's finances healthy. The government has raised the retirement age to 65 from 60 for men and to 60 from 55 for women. And Putin's approval ratings have suffered as a result falling from a record high of almost 90% in 2015 to 64% now. The Canadian government passed a law late on Wednesday that would allow its citizens with a criminal record for marijuana possession to be pardoned without any cost and expedite a process that previously could take up to a decade. Senator Tony Dean said in a statement that the new bill is aimed at shedding the burden of stigma and removes barriers for employment, education, housing, volunteering, and travel for people with records for simple possession of cannabis. 
The bill, titled C-93, follows Canada's legalization of the sale and recreational use of marijuana and cannabis products last year, making Canada the first industrialized nation to legalize recreational cannabis. According to Statistics Canada, out of nearly 55,000 cases of cannabis-related offenses, 76% were for simple possession in 2016. The new bill is expected to speed the pardon process by eliminating the potential 5- to 10-year wait time and waives an application fee. It calls for a simplified and expedited version of the pardon process and will be allowed as long as the sentence had been completed and if the only conviction on their criminal record was for simple marijuana possession. An international group of astrophysicists have discovered two Earth-like planets potentially capable of supporting life. Both planets, named Tea Garden B and Tea Garden C, orbit the Tea Garden Star, a sun roughly 12 and a half light years away from Earth and about 10 times smaller than the one in our solar system. Matthias Zeckmeister, lead author of the study and a research scientist at the Institute for Astrophysics at the University of Göttingen, said in a news release, The two planets resemble the inner planets of our solar system. They are only slightly heavier than Earth and are located in the so-called habitable zone, where water can be present in liquid form. The study, published Wednesday in the journal Astronomy and Astrophysics, indicates the planets appear to be billions of years old, giving life a chance to evolve and surround a stable star that doesn't give off large solar flares. The Tea Garden discoveries are part of a larger project aimed at finding planets capable of supporting life. That team has now found 11 such planets. And that's your update for this Thursday, June 20th, 2019. I'm Larry Rice. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day.